joining me tonight for Love Dish. So how many of you find yourself just exhausted at the end of the day? You've been at work, you've been in the community, you've been running around with your kids or your friends or whatever you're doing during the day. You come home and be it single or married, you just have, you're, you just, you're spent. But you have to find something to cook. Well, I find myself in that place almost daily. So tonight, I've invited one of my girlfriends to come over and just give me some pointers on one of our favorite things. I love pizza, and she makes a really great homemade pizza. So you see, we've got some of the ingredients out tonight that she told me to pick up. And honestly, I just can't wait for her to get over here. She's fantastic. You're going to love her. I think that's her. Welcome back. This is my girlfriend, Tanya Jefferson Lynch, and I am so thankful that you dropped by this evening. Um, as I was mentioning before you got here, I am just so busy and so exhausted, and I know you probably feel the same way too, because I know you got a lot going on that you're going to talk about. <laughs> um, but I picked up everything you asked for. We're going to make homemade pizzas tonight, so I, I really can't wait. Did I get everything you needed? looks really good awesome i got awesome. more than what i needed but <laughs> <laughs> so first before we get started and move into the kitchen why don't you just kind of tell just kind of give me a little bit about what you've been what you've had going on lately a lot so thank you girl for having me over it's gonna be fun um you know that i have a crazy life but to your audience i have a bunch of kids I have eight and a husband and a business and a lot of things going on so that's why we're doing the pizza thing but um, I'm doing the black light project which is documentary um, it's traveling um, currently in Maryland thank you so much and just doing a lot of things work for the university yes um, and which university are you working East for? Carolina University cool. my alma mater yes Go it's Pirates. a great place mine too hard but um but m mostly um, what I'm really working on right now is work-life balance. And I think I've achieved it a little bit. I think pizza helps. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all <laughs> have to find a way to find great work-life balance because, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, by the time I get home, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. And yeah. trying to figure out what I'm going to cook, that's that's just, that's not happening. We're going to eat takeout or ramen or whatever. So, or whatever think, works. <laughs> whatever. Whatever you find, throw it up in the air. If it fits on your plate, eat it. So <laughs> I think, you know, oh having gosh. having an option that, you know, has at least some some healthy ingredients, it looks like, and, right. you know, something that's quick and easy. Yeah, I'm all about that. So I'm makes excited. A, makes the family happy. The yeah. husband happy. He thinks, you know, makes him feel like you chopped and the kids. up. So, yeah, the kids. <laughs> it makes them feel special. Mom made us pizza. It's not yes. Fun. One of those other popular chains, you know, they didn't pay for advertising, so we won't name them. No. <laughs> Nope, we won't. But if you want to pay for advertising, you yes. gotta get that. Man. Yes, so it's gonna be love dish pizza. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cool. Well, I can't wait for us to get into the kitchen and get it's started. Gonna be fun. I'm excited. Me too. Let's go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back. So uh, we're gonna get into making this delicious homemade pizza. And Tanya, I must admit, when you gave me your list and I went to the store because I love to cook, and you know I love to cook. I kind of went a little overboard. I see. <laughs> Pretty cool. I like it. But, you know, I mean, there were so many things that I saw that I liked, and I thought, hopefully we can, hopefully we can use this too. I'm going to try it out and see. If not, hey, I'll just do it again later. <laughs> and it'll be good. We'll eat it. Lots of mouths to feed. We can, we can get started. 
But you mentioned the naan bread, and so I got two yes. different kinds. Yes. I got a garlic flavored, and I got the regular. And so just kind of let me know. I mean, I'm guessing you want to put the. I'm gonna let you talk, but I'm, I'm guessing you want to put either <laughs> the, you know, the tomato sauce or the Alfredo sauce, and then just kind of take me, take me wherever you want me to go from that point. Cool, guys. <laughs> she did go overboard, but it's cool. But like I said, I have a lot of folks, so I tend to go with. I tell you what, we'll do. I'm gonna let her make her the most gorgeous, colorful pizza with her alfredo. I'm going to slide that to you. Okay. I'm going to use the tomato paste. Thank you, thank you. And I'm going to actually use the garlic okay. because I like that flavor. And I use the regular. Okay, so I'm going to grab my garlic. Okay. Boom. And then the regular is right here. Yes. And so looks like we have some sharp cheddar mm -hmm. and some Italian with this mozzarella. Oh, goat cheese, guys, and it's honey flavored. Now, I found that out before we got started. <laughs> Why is it honey flavored again? I don't know. I just thought it was neat, and I like a little sweetness. <laughs> I love it. So, I, so, because I'm thinking, you know, you have eight kids, and so you probably, you know, make a little bit, a different type of pizza. However, for me, you know, I'm gonna have mine with wine or the bougie. It, it, it's good. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a little bougie. I so like I, I have the goat cheese. I have some arugula. I have the portobello mushrooms. Cause and then I don't eat meat. So I'm sure your crew is gonna have the pepperoni, the chicken, or um, ground beef or ground turkey or whatever. So, but for me, I, I'm a, I'm a. Use the veggies. I'm gonna use the arugula. I'm gonna use the goat cheese. <laughs> and have a glass of wine later. If that's okay, and I'm gonna have a glass of wine later. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, that is fine with me. So we're gonna get started. We have our breads, and I have chosen my toppings, and I'm gonna encourage you to do the same. I'm gonna do chicken and cheese. Of course, I love cheese, except for the goat. Maybe not so much. I don't know. Um, and I'm gonna do mushrooms. That's what I'm gonna choose. So you, have you decided? I think. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the Alfredo sauce with the portobello mushrooms and peppers, and maybe I don't know. Maybe if I'm feeling a little frisky when it comes out of the oven, I'll top it off with arugula and goat cheese. Nice. <laughs> well, I like it. So we are gonna get started. Like I said, you have your your bread, which of course is your crust and your base, and you don't need a lot of your whatever sauce you decide to use whether it be you know pizza sauce marinara or alfredo you don't need a lot because a little goes a long way so we're just gonna dab it up there and i had a great dabbing joke right then but <laughs> i thought my children would be embarrassed if i actually oh, but they're not here so just made that I joke mean, okay, i was gonna dab you know <laughs> And I feel like if I just dabbed, I would probably sling that sauce all over the place, but okay, I did it too. We got it. Let me tell you, this is a fun note. My son and I were in a, um, a charity dance competition for East Carolina University, and that was one of our moves was the dab. Okay, so I don't know. Y'all might get to see a touch of our so dab routine. So, you, so what you're saying is you can dance? I, I think. I think I have some moves. Okay. I think I have some moves. I mean, because I might have a few moves myself. I, Maybe. I like it. I like it. I know you have moves. Is it? <laughs> I've seen your moves. I've seen your moves. Other than the two-step, right? <laughs> yes. Because I think I'm like, I, I have a PhD in two-stepping. You do? I, I know I do. I, well, we, we have to, I know I have to see that. I do. But, so we put our sauce on. Yes. So I like to base with cheese because again I love cheese so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of cheese here and you choose whichever one works for you and I think if you want to hang out with me for a long time this evening I'm gonna stick with just the one Alfredo <laughs> okay because too much cheese you know hey might not be <laughs> might not be our best friends tonight <laughs> oh right right it's cool so, it's cool but I it love works. cheese I love cheese okay well like I said I am going to be the greedy person who's not on a diet. If you notice, her pizza also has no meat. And so my pizza is going but to But you know what? Meat. I have not had meat for two months now. And I absolutely love it. It's I don't miss it at all. I do a lot of 
of seafood. I, I love it. I that's impressive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive. For those of you who don't know, you know, of course we'll talk about my husband. My husband owns a company called Two Smoking Coals and he has this huge smoker. I know he sort of don't love you, honey. But um <laughs> he smokes everything. In fact, I offered her I said, if he cooks for you, he's gonna make smoked salmon. He smokes everything. Perfect. So that would be perfect. A meatless life is not for me but it's so good it's so good for those of us that do it it's yeah. so good and so um i really take you know i really take the opportunity to try to show some of those options here I think because, that's great though. you know but you know my daughter she's not meatless at all i think she did maybe like two days of, <laughs> of meatless living with me but i do during the week i try to encourage her to do at least one or two days a week meatless because you know she's young so right. she's trying to do all the fried food all the you know right. junk food she can do and you know just trying to help her find healthy ways to to maintain right. things right now is important so this is a great option though so it is because she can come in and add all the fresh toppings she wants plus it looks like um pepperoni or chicken or whatever you have there so yeah and that's what i was gonna say speaking of the meats you know of course there's pepperoni but this is actually grilled chicken uh, for those you can see this is grilled chicken so it's a much healthier option for you and it is absolutely delicious and so this is one of my favorite toppings to use because it's just it's delicious here you just pop it in your mouth it's great <laughs> but i'm just gonna um sprinkle a little bit here I have the, i'm gonna have the the mushroom okay and so while we're putting these toppings on why don't you well first you know because we gotta talk about love and relationships while we're on here why don't you tell me or tell the listeners a little bit about how you and your husband met because my goodness I gotta I gotta hear more about this eight kids okay and just how you guys met how did all this come to be well you know the fun thing about this whole this is very full circle for me because <laughs> actually you were there when we met I was there uh, it was March the 3rd of 2012 oh my gosh the date and all I do um, I Carolina was playing Duke my sister and I mm -hmm. Um, visited you and went to a viewing party. I don't think I remembered that Carolina was playing Duke, but yeah, they lost. Duke lost. What, by the way? No, we don't have to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, you know, I found it to be an important detail. So, I, mean, I just thought I'd throw it out there. But um, and I love lots of chicken. You do not have to follow what I'm doing. I probably put entirely too much, but hey, I mean, it's healthier. But anyway. Um, we wanted, I wanted to go dancing. I love to dance. I actually, I actually love to dance. And I said, you know, take me somewhere. And we almost backed out. And you no, said, we no. Did. We did. I you said, said, no, you want to go dance, girl? We want to dance tonight. Come <laughs> yes. on, let's go. <laughs> right. And so we got there and I see this little man. He's not a huge guy. And so I see this back of his head and I was like, he looks like he's cute. And so look at this way. Speaking of dancing and dance battles. There was this girl who was much more shapely than I am. God blessed her tremendously. And I'm just, girl, wherever you are, do it, honey. But I didn't have that going on. So she was standing beside him, and I just was like, oh, my God. She's going to take my man who I don't know because he's really cute. Because he be immediately became your man that night. Right away. Right. He was your man vest. as soon as you saw him. Sweater vest <laughs> was yours. Yes, that was his nickname. <laughs> sweater vest. And remember, I said he looks like he works on computers. <laughs> yes, you did. So, um, so because of the sweater vest. Not to say that men that wear sweater vests work on computers. We love men that work on computers, and we love men in sweater vests. Clearly, obviously, so. it was a good day for him. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> but you know, and so we. Well, I asked his cousin, who some guy who ended up being his cousin, to introduce me to him, and I, I can, I literally, this is not a joke when I say this but ever since that night we went on our first date on March the 18th um, of 2012 and from that day we hadn't have not spent more this time right now is probably the longest we've ever been apart wow. we traveling to DC and Maryland to do wow. this in five years and we we got married eight months later so yeah it's impressive <laughs> so but I'm glad you said that so you so you met you met, it sounds like you became exclusive mm -hmm. after a couple of weeks of knowing each other, but how do you, I guess, because it, that wasn't your first relationship, of course. No. How do you get yourself to a point of, you know, vulnerability? Because that's 
really letting your guard down and saying, yes. okay, sweater vest, sweater vest is mine. <laughs> I, I was sure that night. Sure and that night. no matter, come what may, I'm gonna do this. You know, I think that- like, how does that happen? So let me go back in time. What was it? I'm 37. Um, so I was a 32 and this, this is not my first marriage. It's my second marriage and I think I Fell out of love with perfection okay. I think that what does that mean? When, I'm, when I was younger I wanted perfection mm -hmm. and a Lot of people are caught up with this idea of this perfect relationship yeah. and that just doesn't exist yeah. and I'll So give some examples of what you know people are are saying are thinking when they say I want this perfect relationship well you know I think it's almost as if we're um, we have this we're have this delusional view of ourselves mm. that we're perfect yeah and so the other person shouldn't have any flaws either That's so true. as soon That's as true. they have like this flag that comes up that they're not perfect like, oh no I ain't putting up with that right and, like uh, you gotta go you got yeah you gotta go <laughs> And it's interesting because someone I, I read, I, so someone used to say this to me all the time, but then I recently read it. So we judge ourselves by our intentions, but mm -hmm. we judge other people by their actions. Absolutely. So I, it, that's kind of what came to mind when you said about Absolutely. the perfection piece. I had to think when at the end of the day, mm -hmm. what did I need from a relationship? Okay. And in my previous marriage, we, you know, we have a great relationship with the children are concerned, whatever the case may be. But in my previous marriage, he had, he, I was a stay at home mom and I, you know, I got, this is not a joke, I got cars for my birthday. I got brand new cars. That was my gift. So that was what I got. It, what I received. You said cards? It, cars. C A R S. It's like a so, brand new Sequoia Limited. I'll never forget this. I got two of them and a Forerunner. A car. Yeah. For four years, we're married four years. Wow. And in that time, I got three cards because I think I had three birthdays. And so women think, oh, yeah, because you get to stay home yeah. and you get to do this. Okay. But he was not feeling my passion. Mm -hmm. I okay. was very complacent. Yeah. Um, we just generally were not happy. He wasn't the one. He, he wasn't the one. Yeah. And what I found was that what we think will make us happy. Right. We really have to look further into our own selves. So I took time. I was mm. uninvolved for four years. I was not involved with anyone. Yeah. Period. N celibate. The whole nine. I just said no. She said celibate. Celibate y'all. It's spiritual cleansing. Yeah. It's very good for you. It's a good thing. But it really is a good thing as I add cheese to my pizza. <laughs> but it's a very, very, very good thing. <laughs> and for those who took notice, I am also adding my mushrooms. I love how this is going to go. Yeah, this is going to be really good. My piece is going to be very interesting. So let's go back though. You said you were celibate for four years. Yes. Um, you went through the, the healing, cleansing mm -hmm. process. And then, boom, here's sweater vest. <laughs> Yes. The man with the plan. Yeah. <laughs> he allowed me to be me. Yeah. And I allowed him, if he said allowed, meaning, I'm sorry, but we know we do that. We don't want people to be a certain way, but we, you don't act this way, you know? Right. Or we, oh, or we hold them, like, we, we hold grudges against them being themselves. Right. You know? Right. Like, I, I wear fuzzy socks every single day of <laughs> right. my life. I'm going to wear fuzzy socks. But if you have a problem with that and you're in, inside, you're rolling your eyes, you tell me it's okay to do that, but inside it's a problem, eventually that's going to come out. And I'm using that as, a, as an example, but it could be anything. Right. You know? Right. I what love I, fuzzy socks. I know. They're, they're <laughs> the bomb. You, and, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, as they should. Right. Yeah. As they should, they should. But yeah, so just allowing him to be who he yeah. is. He's a down home country boy. He's one of nine children. Wow. Um, he is from Halifax County, North Carolina. Um, and I I was called bougie, but, which is still <laughs> not true y'all, by you know, some of his family or whatever. But he, i never forget our first, one of our first dates, mm -hmm. one early dating. I, you know, I do, I put the nap in my lap and I did the taps, you know, the corner of my mouth. He's like, are you for real? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, that is so cute. And he still thinks that is so cute. Like, would you, would you? Yeah. <laughs> little, little, 
dab, dab, and he put the napkin back. You know, he said, you're so dainty and so ladylike, but he loves it. I flip it, and I'm like, real like, hold on. I know you did, you know. Right. So. Because you got to show that side, too. You have to. And I think, <laughs> and, and I love, he, I think, I love that he lets me be every shade of me. I love that. You know, and I love, I want him to be every shade of him. Because I want this to last. I want to be married. And people change and people right. grow. Right. And this has not been a perfect journey by no means. Mm -hmm. In fact, you hit the most bumps really early on. Like, whoa, what did I do here? But at the end of the day, I just have decided I won't allow myself to lose sight of what me made yeah. what made me fall so in love with him that I said not only would I commit my life to you, mm -hmm. you know, being your wife for the rest of my life, but I'd also become a mother to your three children. Right. I had three children. He had three children. Wow. And then, which is almost a bigger commitment than then having two children right. by him. So that's how we got the eight. Your math was right. Three, three, <laughs> two, eight. So, uh, so, but, so the, I love that you guys were able to come together. You had three, he had three. Mm -hmm. You've had two since you've been married. But a blended family is not an easy feat in marriage. I mean, no. how do you guys, how do you do it? How do you maintain, you know, just being able to to have that large, because that's an even larger commitment, in my yes. opinion. I don't know, I mean, I got one. It, you know, <laughs> that's right. Any of you out there who have a blended family, yeah. you know, it is a huge commitment, especially when our children are stair steps. Aside right. from his youngest one, okay. we, our children are, I'm going to go top down, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 7, 3, oh and 2 years old. Wow. And so we have them from 11th grade down to 7th grade. And then we have a second grader and then two who are, you know, they're not in school yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And you look amazing. Thank you. 17 to 2. Yes. <laughs> and I have, and I am the proud owner of the 17 year old. That's my biological daughter. And then the two year old daughter is my biological wow. daughter. And I have the, actually the oldest son and the youngest son. The 16 year old boy is mine. And so you have the bookends. I have the bookends for sure. <laughs> it is a flopped right. In right, the right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but, at, but with a blended family, like how was that coming together? Um, you know, giving opportunity for the kids to mm -hmm. to bond so that you are one family i've got to say that a lot of it is luck for me a lot of it is just luck right now um shout out to my um husband's previous two girlfriends they're about two different women um especially the teenagers because that's a rough age the younger Aaron who's our seven-year-old he we've been together five years so what mm -hmm. he was two so he's gonna be wherever yeah. you got popsicles and you know yeah. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches he's happy you know what I mean <laughs> it doesn't take much right but you're talking about teenagers that comes from that other parent right. being being supportive supportive mm -hmm. and committed to their children having a world view like right. a very um, connected worldview yeah. and so she was very accepting of me and I of her so when the kids came to really get to know me it wasn't that little so and so over there mm. and I think that that's if you're gonna be in a blended family investigate that type of stuff early definitely. on definitely definitely it can make for a really great path or yeah. a really hard path so yeah. that's that I would agree with that I mean technically I don't have a blended family on my end, but my mm -hmm. ex-husband does, you know. Oh, wow. Um, and so my daughter had to had to meet a new, you know, she has a stepsister and she has a stepmom. Wow. And so, yeah, I would say you have to, I agree fully, you have to be supportive of that other relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if not, it, it could be disastrous. Oh, my God. It could, oh. it could, um, because my, our two sons did get into it one time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just picked up the phone. Hey, what's going on, girl? What's right. going on? And she was like, Well, John said this, okay, you know, two toot. That's what we call him, you know, two smoking coals. He's a little toot, so two toot. <laughs> um, you know, two toot said this, okay, let's work this out. Right. And what the children saw 
was that we were not gonna create party lines. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take your side because you're my kid. Right, right. Or whatever the case may be. And so that was that. But as far as what we do in our home, it's just, you're mine. Yeah. Like when we go out and say, these are my stepkids and right. these are my kids. They're these are my kids. kids. These yep. are my kids. I don't remember you having that one. You don't have to. Right. You know. That's true. These are my kids. And I normally, if people do ask, I'll say, well, these mm -hmm. are my children, my birth, but these are children, of my heart. Yeah. Meaning Aww. that's why I gave birth to them. Is they, I love them all. They're mine. Yeah. And I make sure I make time for them. But one of the keys, I think, is for me, like this weekend, I don't have all. Mm hmm while I'm doing some traveling, yeah. I can't take all of, my, all of them. Right, right. And so I still make time for my first three. Mm -hmm. Because I think what happens when you come into a blended family, they can feel a sense of loss. Like Definitely. I used to have you all the time. Right. What happened? Now they have to share you. So. And they have to share. Yes. And they need to feel connected. Just like any parent mm -hmm. does. When they have more than one child, typically you'll take a day for the oldest and right. the to indulge them in what they like, we still do that. My husband is, you know, um, he does barbecue cooking competitions, mm -hmm. and he'll take his oldest son, he'll take his daughter. When we do, um, we you know, we do catering, yeah. when we do that, we won't always take up, well, he'll take all the boys, and I'll I take like the that. girls. So we do bonding activities that bond us just in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Important I like that. Well, I'm gonna make a second pizza while we're still talking. Cool. I, I think I'm gonna try the too. the garlic and slow maybe down. switch it up and do yeah yeah that'd be fun and do some of the red sauce. Okay. Because um, at some point, I mean, I do have to. I, you know what, guys? I'm gonna, gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Alfredo. Yes. All right, these look really good. I'm really excited. I can't wait to taste it. Um, so why don't we go ahead and put them in the oven? And so how long do they have to be in the oven and on what temperature? Okay. Well, we have it set to 350. Okay. If you have to see back there, 10 to 15 minutes, just long enough to let the cheese brown a little bit and you know soak in some of those flavors. So awesome. Let's go ahead and put it in. I'll put mine on the top. Since I had a lot of cheese, maybe on the bottom. And um, while we're waiting, mm -hmm. I recall you saying something about um, dancing and some moves that helped you meet your honey. Yeah, right. So, you know, being that that helped you find your man, right. you need to show me a little bit of some of these moves. I got you, man. I got yeah, you. All right, okay. I think we got a few <laughs> minutes. I think we got a couple minutes for you. Minutes. 10, 15. A couple. 10 to 15 <laughs> for you to show me a couple of your little dance moves. Ready? Mm -hmm. You got it. <laughs> I have skills. That's how I got my boo. Step it up. I'm playing. I'm not <laughs> no, <I love> you. <laughs> so that's all we got. Okay, that's all we got. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to speed it up. Me too. We're going to dance anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have any more dances. Welcome back. So we got the pizzas out of the oven, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to taste. They look absolutely delicious. They do. So let me. Sergio, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to just throw this little piece right on here. Thank you so much. This so good. This little piece right here. And while, so um, as we're tasting the pizza and everything, why don't you tell us about the Black Light Project? Well, thank you for asking. For Again, this looks good. And you can't smell it, but when you make your own, you'll see it smells de delicious. Mm -hmm. But so focus, really the Black Light Project, um, it's like a new baby okay. for me. Okay. Um, and it is basically, at its core, a positive, a way to positively show or expose, I would say expose, I kind of like yeah. that word, um, black males. We know we have a lot going on in our society yes, and we want yes. to... Um, show them in the best light. So Black Life Project, it is a photography ex exhibit as well as a documentary. It's approximately an hour long okay. that accompanies that. And I travel and I do talks 
about why this media project is important to change and shape, reshape how we see black men in the media. I love it. I love it. So definitely make sure that you reach out to Tanya if you're interested in bringing the Black Light Project to your area. Um, so before we close out, okay. I have to ask you this question. I ask everyone this question that comes on the show. So we've talked about how you and your husband met. We've talked mm -hmm. about the ups and downs of the blended family. Um, we, we've talked about a lot of things tonight, but why don't you leave the listeners and the viewers with this? What is your greatest hope for love? I would say that my greatest hope for love is that love endures. Okay. Because, you know, as I stated earlier, when we have a quest for perfection, I think that we give up easier yeah. because we um, aren't willing to endure the bumps and the bruises. Mm -hmm. And that makes for, honestly, some of the best um, tales of redemption, stories yeah. of redemption for our love. And so for me, at the ripe age of 37 and having children who are soon going to college and children who are going to pre-K and all these different things, that my hope is that love would endure and that it will cover, as the Bible speaks of a multitude of faults and just carry us through those bumpy seasons and so that we can enjoy the sunny seasons. I love that. I love that. Love enduring sounds like um, the perfect remedy for what ails us now when we're looking for perfection. So I really love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Thanks my show. Me. Thank you for visiting and showing me how to make homemade pizza. This pizza, I can't wait to dig in. But first, I want to just make sure that everyone knows how to reach you. So you can reach Tanya at? Well, you can visit our website at theblacklightproject.com. Um, you can reach me via email, info at theblacklightproject.com, Facebook, the Black Light Project. Um, Twitter, we are Black Light P2. Sorry, Black Light was taken. And on Instagram, it is Black Light Project. So, but the best way is just go to our website. All of that good stuff is here, theblacklightproject.com. Tune in next week. We'll have a whole new guest, a whole new signature dish. I'm KS Lewis signing off for Love Dish. See you soon. Now let's eat this pizza. We did it, girl. We did it. We did. It's so bougie. <laughs> mm, it's good though. It's good though. <laughs> mm, very good. Thank you so much for joining me on Love Dish tonight. So, being in the limelight comes with lots of perks, but also equal challenges, right? And finding love is at the top of that list. But next week, I want you to join me as I talk with independent recording artist D. Maurice Macklin as we dish on love in the limelight. See you next week. This could be the very...